Okay, so we are going to tackle today Cubot. So, not an exercise in Cyber Defenders, not an exercise on the Let's Defend platform. We are pulling from real world samples to go through and basically have a discussion in regards to us. So, before you wonder, this is from a uh, actual environment. Email came in, I have done uh, name changes, and email address changes, everything else like that, basically in the theme of Dr. House, if you remember that show, um, basically a, what is it, diagnostic expert, uh, walks with a limp, has a Vicodin addiction, so on and so forth, uh, anyways. So we are going to take a look at some of the current samples as this stuff comes in. <clears throat> so it's either been blind emails or it's been um, uh, effectively email hijacks. So Qbot will get into a particular environment. They'll go through, take a look at the emails, and kind of find a back and forth chain between the next set of targets. And they'll just kind of interrupt and kind of like reply back as in this particular case so William House sent off a notification at some particular point uh, regarding grievance forms so you see William.house at doctor.com just because of the fact I did not remember the hospital name or tried to figure out uh, you know how it would end up being shortened um, and then obviously the from is from HR at we do not doct dot co dot ID and basically the or the net display name is medical DR incoming grievances effectively just has a simple attachment contract copy and it's an HTML file so okay looks like you know, somebody picking up on maybe like a six month plus old thread of communications. It's like, okay, well, there's an HTML file. What's the worst that could come with an HTML file? Well, generally, you wouldn't think much. And to a particular extent, I mean, they're not exactly wrong. So if we open up the HTML file, we get what looks like a uh, file not displayed correctly. So obviously we're going to go ahead and here's a password for the document. So here's the first red flag. So we all rely on, you know, AV scanning documents, everything else along those lines. Well, you go through and you scan, it has to be able to access it. So this attachment that's so what's going on in the background is that as soon as this opened up and it doesn't look like it's actually going to show on the screen of course not but effectively as soon as I open this up Firefox immediately downloaded from that HTML file an attachment.zip that attachment.zip is opened with the password that's displayed on the screen the ABC333 so if we go back and, okay, well, I mean, the sample is a little bit older. But effectively, we take just the email itself and run it through, and we get a number of detections. Now, there were just about no detections previously. And this is about a month old. And if we take the attachment... Well, now it picks up a whole metric ton. One, it's been a month. On top of that, um, Virus Total apparently has added the portion to ask for the password to actually go through and scan everything. So, if we go ahead and open up the attachment to take a look have extracted it out but effectively just to show so yes inside of the downloads directory and before you wonder I am it is the live system but I am running a sandbox program.
product in order to kind of self-contain everything. So before, I am practicing what I preach. It's not straight execution on the actual box itself. But if we open up the attachment, what we end up seeing... Oh, I just realized I didn't flag through, so let me transition that there. And then of course we're going to immediately not to be outdone. Let me just kind of move this over a little bit and... Okay, so we go ahead and we open up attachment. We get contract copy underscore. Two four two four dot ISO. So of course the real big problem is is that I've got to cut off. anything else. So you might think, okay, well, it's an ISO file, so how is this a problem? So if you've seen the other videos that I've done in regards to ISO malware uh, that have pretty much all centered around ad search, um, you should realize that most AVs have a hell of a time with this. And before it was always, you know, zip files. Um, I mean, outright zip files, and then the payload would be inside of that. So we're going through another layer of abstraction, or it would be, you know, malicious Word documents or Excel documents, Office documents, effectively. So part of the portion with this is, one, there's no external communications. So if you dumped out Wireshark, and you were sitting there monitoring your sandbox to see this stuff go through, you would be sadly disappointed because there is nothing there. It is all self-contained inside of that email file. And if I can quickly go through and turn off the AV just enough so it doesn't freak out, Because we're going to extract it, even though it is in a sandbox. One hour should be enough. So we have that contract copy. So, but if we take a look, it looks like it extracted perfectly fine. Now, the impulse is, okay, well, I want to take a look at this. If this was a typical just fresh Windows 10 build, Windows 11 build, Windows tries to help you. Windows will mount the ISO file in a virtual CD-ROM drive. So if you just have, you know, a CD or a C and a D drive, you know, like two hard drives or something that's partitioned in on one physical piece of medium, you will then have an E drive that will sh look for all intents and purposes like you magically now have an optical drive attached to your computer and the files would be contained there within. The typical loadout is going to be an LNK file, which is what they will try to entice you to click, which will then typically go to like a JavaScript file or maybe a BAT file or a CMD file, some sort of scripting. And at basically at the end of it, we'll go through to call and register a DLL file. So we're going to kind of break that particular aspect down here. So because I use 7-zip and I have that for the ISO files, 7-zip handles all that stuff. No Windows 10 trying to be helpful, anything else like that. So let's see if I can extract out the contents into a folder. And it looks like I can. So we open that up. Well, we get contract copy, which is a shortcut. And then we have a 7965 folder. We're going to avoid interacting with that shortcut file. We're going to go take a look at the contents of everything else. So there's the JS file that would be called 1613.js, which I believe open with 
and then we'll do notepad so I can just kind of show the individual sections. So let me get the contract copy closed out. That's one of the things I love about having this stuff inside of its own separate sandbox. So it looks like just by looking or having that shortcut display, it actually tried to go through and fire off the payload. I mean, I'll still go through and check the scans and blow out the you know, temporary sandbox that I created for QBot, but can't be too careful. So. Let's go ahead and again, we want to do open with. All right, fine. Let's just do edit and notepad plus plus by that point. That's fine because it is just taking way too stinking long. I don't think I've ran that in a sandbox, so maybe it won't bother to show anything else. But let me get these things termed. And what we can do to kind of screw around with this is we'll go back, and we're just going to change the number convention so we can take a look at that contract copy. And we're just going to and we're gonna go ahead and go through, and we're just going to kill the rest of this stuff as it's trying to actually run. OK. So now I can't do anything, because the content is not there. So if we go through and try to pull like the properties, and of course now the real fun begins. Can I actually show this? I think I can. I just need to make it bigger so we can all see exactly what's going on here. Okay. Transition over. So effectively, it is just C Windows System 32. It's calling CMD. And then basically going back to the directory that it's calling from, looking for that 7965 folder, and then trying to kick off the 1613.js. Okay. Self-explanatory so far at that particular point. Nothing that really stands out. Oops. And I just realized that I just told it to not leave the files in question. OK, so let me undo that. OK, so there's that. So we can see what the shortcut or LNK file is attempting to kick off and do. It wants to call inside of that folder the JS file. So if I can find my Notepad++ window here, we can kind of show off the code that's all nice and there. Except I don't think it's going to be nice. Okay, managed to get that put together. So here is the 1613.js file. And we can see that it's going through, trying to do wscript shell application. 
shall execute and then of course it looks like the next portion is again calling out the 7965 folder and then it's moving on to the 4264.cmd that was just next to the JS file. So we'll flip that open and we go through and it wants to sit there and kick off so that reg service 32 for the unbegrudge.det file and then exit so basically it wants to register that debt file so if we take all this out and zoom in our Firefox window and transition so here is the contact contract copy underscore 2424.iso and so we've got the image everything else like that you know what I want to do too let's open up the email inside of notepad plus plus and then we'll go back to that so I can show you before we move forward with that switch this over and then of course it's a ginormous thing so let me play around quickly with how this is set up oh yeah I gotta shrink that down it is way too massive okay so here's the email so obviously if you've never opened up an email inside of a text editor or anything else along those lines you have the header information up at top so this is where we get the you know subject we get who it's going to our doctor house from the medical grievances and we move down we got more information and then we end up with So this went through a Office 365 environment due to the aspect in regards to, so we're seeing the Microsoft stuff in there. But effectively we get the contents are all base64 encoded. So the contents, everything else like that. So that the system actually has to go through and take a look. And you can't look at this and immediately determine, you know, that this grouping of base 64 you know for instance goes through and matches say the, the subject or like the top line or top section of the email and of course the next base 64 section will be everything else and then in a particular portion we'll find that HTML file and that's probably the other aspect we should probably take a look at as well We'll get that opened up. And so, okay, offline reader, which we can confirm was the title for that first tab inside of Firefox when we opened up the attachment. And so, of course, as soon as it loads, go ahead and load image. What image is that? Well, it's everything here that is indeed encoded with base64. So you have the actual image itself. All this here. And then you have the action to go through and you have the zip file inside of here. Now, alternatively, I have also seen it where instead of a zip file they just send a str they'll send the HTML file as soon as you open it it will go ahead and download the ISO file and typically you'll have instructions to go through and you know open this up and 
you know, run the ISO file and take a look at the contents there for what you're looking for, your copy of the contract in this particular case. So if we take this, come over and we grab the dat file. I realize you can't see, but I am moving this over. And so, okay, one month ago, this is at the time this was going on. So early October, 2022, this dat file was the only portion that was actually being detected. The email was fine. The zip file was fine. The ISO file was fine. It was this, only this particular file would flag anything. And obviously right now, 32 out of 71. You might think that, well, that's not so bad. Let's see if it has gotten any better. So mind you, this is over a month difference. And the number to beat is, what was it, 31, 32? already be beaten that. It would be interesting to see as to whether or not if QBot slows down now that Emotet's back and kicking off. So there you go, 53 out of 71. So like a 75% somewhere within there detection rate. But it kind of shows you, at least for this stuff to come into the environment, I mean even then you had to have one of those I really can't say handful, but few handfuls of AVs that detect this stuff or maybe have machine learning component that would realize that, yes, yeah, something here smells off. So this has gotten a lot better in 30 days time or roughly 30 days. Sandbox evasion. Still nothing though that sits there and immediately says that, oh hey, this is QBot by the way. Okay, so I've dumped the dat file into any.run. And so of course the first thing it kicks off with is danger, QBot detected by memory dumps. And this one's compiled for QBot. So this thing has been around what, since the late 2000s, I believe? Uh, let's see, active since 2008, primarily used by financially motivated actors. In other words, okay, we want information to sit there and try to make off with credit card details, bank details, whatever we can get our hands on. Let's see, schemeless URLs, not this particular case, malicious URLs, no, encrypted malicious attachment, yeah, kind of, sort of, malicious HTML attachment, which is effectively where this would kind of sit as this stuff is now. So, email, the HTML attachment, password protected zip, ISO file, and then basically the whole process once that ISO file is mounted and the LNK file is looked at in order for everything to kick off. So I'll have to, uh, and this looks exactly the same thing that we've observed. Same type of window once we open up the HTML attachment. Same process of automatically going through and downloading the zip file with an ISO in file there inside.
and they have the same type of aspect in there as well. So zip. So if I open up just search for what dot zip. No hits whatsoever. I'm looking in that HTML attachment and I do not see what that would be, but there is the load image section which does denote supposedly a yeah. Another section of base 64, which was the section that turned like a pinkish purple. And the same aspect that we observed previously. ISO file breaks down with a shortcut. Well, the subfolder that goes through and has a bunch of the other DLL. Uh, this one's a little bit different. This has got a lot more DLLs in it at the time that they did this, which they published this when? August 24th. So literally days before I got my hands on this sample and basically sat on it and made changes. I'll include the malware bytes article in regards to all this stuff. And so it looks like this is about done. So yeah, we get a couple of different sus aspects. Loader dropped or rewritten executable. So there's no other events that are basically dumped underneath that. And of course it might be different if I actually just tried to upload the ISO, but problem would be one it's a month old so the uh, back end c2 infrastructure may not be there may not even exist anymore I don't think Windows 7 had the ISO capabilities to go ahead and try to make life easier. I think that was pretty much Windows 10 and above. Um, but yeah, so we don't really get as much information out of this as what I would have really hoped. Yeah, it looks like Windows error reporting kicked off. It could be, too, that it's basically compiled only to work on 64-bit systems. Which, obviously, the free version of any.run only limits you to 32-bit. So what if we try to go hybrid analysis instead and just drop that dev file in? Because it doesn't really need anything else. We're kind of skipping the middleman in regards to, you know, no LNK file, to call a JS file, to call a CMD file, to then eventually goes through and actually does the needful for that dev file. Oh. Hybrid analysis included a Windows 10 64 bit. I wasn't aware that they were doing that. I'm ecstatic now. Let's see what happens if we go ahead and try to run this sucker through. So, effectively, this would be a good time. Um, 
if you're doing enterprise security you're probably sitting there and you're grabbing for like admin quarantine for somebody in infosec to investigate rar files zip files if they're str sending out straight word and excel um attached emails stuff like that or you're relying on um av engines that would ever be or whatever be a gateway solution to actually go through and scan you might want to seriously consider adding the ISO VHD file attachments like that for disk images. I think IMG is the other one. Um, to basically like a block list for at least quarantine and review. Now, of course, in this particular instance, because it is an HTML file, not a zip or an ISO file directly, it is the, because remember, attachment to the email was an HTML file with everything built into it so no external comps so that means you're going to be effectively stuck taking a look at you know your seven day your 30 day 60 day 90 day 120 day history looking for how many times in the environment have you had HTML files come in as an attachment I know that there are services like Cisco's Ironport for secure document delivery. They tend to send HTM and HTML files, so maybe a whitelist to exclude areas for that. Um, if you can confirm the IP address ranges or the sending address, whatever the case would be. Yep, okay, so it's got that. And it looks like it was run previously, so let's go ahead and just bring up the the current or the the old portion so it gets a hundred out of hundred percent malicious don't have any sort of network communications no DNS which is sad but I mean what else are we going to do wait for the other one I guess effectively so I mean you're gonna to want to take a look at your previous history in regards to emails how many times have you seen HTML files come in can you go through and you know be able to sit there and craft a rule that will allow your legitimate stuff in and hopefully stop this particular aspect I mean effectively you are yes putting in something that as soon as they change it um, you know, and they start moving to something else besides just HTML files. Okay, you're stuck playing catch up again, but given the prevalence of the amount of emails being shot out for Qbot, much less the social engineering aspects those emails tend to take, and at the particular times that these campaigns are going, you're going to want it to obviously take care. For home users, everything else like that, just be entirely skeptical of anything ISO. Um, those of us that you know have more of the the IT calling, yeah, we know ISO files and typically put that together with either game CD or DVD backup or Linux distros, since those are used for ISOs, but those are effectively you are legitimately seeking out something to have it pulled. This is coming in unsolicited, again, social engineering notwithstanding in the emails themselves. And I'll, I'll just include the new scan once that's done, because this is taking too long. So effectively, Outside of that particular aspect, I mean, realistically, okay, you're paying, you end up having to pay close attention for other uh, campaign changes. But, I mean, the simplest thing is, okay, Qbot, Google search. And you've got stuff all over the place, just obviously not paying any attention to the automated quilter. <laughs> But I mean, oh wait, is that that was not Malwarebytes? That was Trillix. 
Yeah, that was Trillix. Okay, my apologies. But yeah, there have been numerous articles put out. A lot of them in recent time as well. So I realize that, yeah, most of this has been kind of geared towards uh, Enterprise. Oh, here we go. It finished. Or did it? No, it didn't. Let's see. Let's see what one. My apologies. Here, I was getting all excited. But, so, that's typically the process that we're looking at here. Um, if you're going to go through and do an analysis, even on a sandbox, it might be beneficial. Or if you've got a ISO that you want to sit there and take a look. Um, one, okay, apparently if you can stand up a Windows 7 box, it's not going to have the stuff built in in order to sit there and automatically infect. Or just sit there and start using 7-zip and you can extract the contents out of those ISO files into wherever to go through and do the work necessary. And that works on either level, home or business. Since you don't have to pay for 7-zip, you just need to have a sandbox that you can basically dump that sucker in. But yeah, so, because there's been discussions in regards to, you know, other malware that uses ISO files outside of ad search, which was, what, like a three-part series that I did, and then brought it all together. So we've got this particular aspect. And then the other aspect would have probably want to bring awareness to next time is the uh, probably the bat loader but those are utilizing MSI files you stumble into while you're looking for things like slack team viewer any desk stuff of that nature um, and basically how that process tends to go but so I'll wait for all this stuff together and as always I will put the links to the scans everything else like that inside I'll probably do a quick blurb too in terms of you know things you can do to kind of defend against these particular aspects but seeing as how the threat actors are always changing their stuff up um, actually I believe they changed from JS back to a CMD in the last campaigns that I observed so there is you can't always expect that it's going to play out the same exact way with every campaign they're gonna find what's going to work they're gonna stick with it and they'll probably keep working just at a particular time like this you know you upload the email the ISO to virus total the attachment everything would be entirely fine it's not until you actually got down to the last portion of that chain so again so excluding the particular aspect ISO gets mounted LNK file goes to the JS file calls the CMD file which then goes through and performs actions with that DAT file so there we go I've rambled and waffled for just shy of 40 minutes on Qbot so effectively and this would be kind of the same type of situation. You get a full-on detection that this thing was allowed to run. Probably better to nuke and pave the system as opposed to anything else. Unless you're playing with a very old sample that just about everything now finds and is able to work at. So I will get all that stuff put together, get it in the notes, so on and so forth. And then questions, comments, concerns toss them in the video comments or reach out via social media and the like and maybe we can take the conversation a little bit further than just me talking at the void <laughs> or basically answering the questions of you know what kind of other malware might be included inside of an ISO file so so far ad search which I think has also been called Chrome Loader we have Qbot obviously and then the other aspect is uh, bat loader. Oh wait, no, that's that's not ISO file. Excuse me. Oh, this stuff's running together. <laughs> but okay.
of waffling. I will see everybody in the next video, which will either be the bat loader, or I'm going to sit there and try to do some more Cyber Defender videos. It's, that's been asked for as well, because it's been, I mean, no giant surprise, heavy concentration on Let's Defend stuff, which, okay, everybody seems to enjoy that, but there's been a little bit more of, hey, more Cyber Defenders. Which, I mean, okay, it's a little bit different. So, all that being said, I will see everybody in the next video.